VO in Stereo is sponsored by Bodalgo, international voice acting platform. Welcome, everyone, to VO and Stereo. As always, I'm your host, Jared Brushers, along with... Stephen Coghill. Today, my guest really doesn't need an introduction, but I'm going to give him one anyway. Let's see. Let's just start down the list. He's been a production assistant, a production coordinator, an executive assistant, a coordinating casting director, a casting associate. He's a master, not only in the voiceover industry, but also in animation. Please help me welcome vocal director Everett Oliver. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> oh, you're very welcome. I'm sure he does much more than vocal directing, but you know, he's a man of great talent. <laughs> I do a hot lot. Yeah, actually, right. I do a lot more, but absolutely. Yeah. Oh, there's no way I could get everything to encapsulate you in an introduction. I thought to myself, I was like, damn, it's gonna be the first five minute introduction that right? we had. So, but Lee, welcome. Thank you so much for being on yeah. with us. Thank it's you. Really yes, good. thank you. Pleasure. All Thank right. you. Thank you for allowing me to appear in episode 25. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. I, I Here your we go. Replacement. I'm your mid-season replacement. Yes. Well, I've got to get your ratings up. Let's get them up. That's, up, that's up, 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 up. Get them up there. <laughs> so, uh, Everett, thank you so much for taking time out to do our lovely show. Thank so great you. to see you. Uh, you my too. first question to you, sir. Uh-oh. Let me get my notes. Get your notes. <laughs> Please review. Uh, my question to you is, where were you born? <laughs> Hold on, let me Google. <laughs> <laughs> we're off to a bad start. Um, I was born in New York City. If you want me to get specific. I was born in the Boogie Down, as we say. We, I was born in the Boogie Down Bronx. <laughs> well, we call it the Bronx. Yes. And a snowstorm. <laughs> oh, snow in the month of February. <laughs> in the month of February. Nice. 21 inches. I believe it was 21, 22 inches. Holy and, crap. Uh, <laughs> you asked. <laughs> no one knew that. <laughs> As, yeah, I remember that, um, that storm mm -hmm. a long time ago. My grandmother and my mother, uh, I believe they, they couldn't take a cab because I don't think cabs were going because of the snowstorm. So I think my mother walked to the hospital and my grandmother, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was born early in the morning. My dad was in the service. I'll probably give you more information than you need to know. It's fine. <laughs> Perfect. Well, my dad was did, in the service. Mm -hmm. Did you, uh, did you wow. have uh, uh, siblings growing up? Uh, no, I didn't, but my parents had a boy 17 years later uh, he was born in 86. I shouldn't even have said that. So we are 17 years apart. Mm -hmm. So everyone in the neighborhood thought that I had a kid. Oh no. So it was like, Everett had a kid? Everett had a kid? It's like, oh, okay. No. No. <laughs> we did not have a kid. <laughs> and um, it was just, it, 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 I was on my way to college. So I was uh, present presented the news. Um, <laughs> Y'all really getting a whole lot of information that shouldn't be said. Um, I was presented the news during um, an episode as my parents were watching the Cosby Show. <laughs> wow! They had not told me. Yes, mm -hmm. nice. I and therefore I was in the other room, and I could hear. I think we need to tell them. I think we need to tell them. Well, yeah. see what oh. we need to tell them. Okay. I kind of sort of knew. I kind of oh. sort of knew because I remember um, I picked up the phone and I, call, I called my cousin. And I said, uh, I think mom's pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> and he that probably knew. Wild. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and I was like, great. So you I'm on way to school. You basically. Like, Y'all have fun with that. that. Yeah. You basically grew up without. Uh, I grew up as an only child, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And so you were surrounded by family. You said your grandmother and your aunt and lots of other family members. When well, when I was born, when you were growing angle. up, yeah, when you're no, growing when up. I was growing up. Oh, I grew up around. Yeah, I would say, um, oh boy, uh, cousins, a lot of cousins. Um, yeah, since I was an only child, and um, you know, just some neighborhood kids. Um, I, uh, I was, yeah, I was, I, I was really who I am today. I was probably a little bit more hyper. <laughs> I was very independent when I was um, when I was nine. I knew at, at nine I was cooking for myself. Um, I used to come home from school. I used to call my parents when I first got home from school. Um, I did laundry at nine. <laughs> I did, yeah, I did chores at nine. Yeah, so they, I was trained this way, as my parents would say. They trained me to, you know, to say to me, you know, this is, we don't know what they actually, what the world's going to be like, but we, we want you to be, you be self-sufficient. So that's what the reason why I'm, I am who I am. That's and so, I just took it from there. It's a good skill to learn. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's why if you see why I'm independent and strong headed and stuff like that, that's the reason why I was trained like this. So I just took it and I was like, oh, okay. Um, but my upbringing, I grew up around everybody. So I went to Catholic school for Catholic uh, elementary school, Catholic high school. And my school was going to take me to a Catholic college. And I was like, ooh, I think we're done. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, hold on, time out, time out, time out. But I got a four year, actually, to, 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 to be funny, I got a four year scholarship for um, to go to college um, in New Orleans. And I turned it down. <laughs> and it was oh, a Catholic wow. college. Catholic <laughs> college. It was a Catholic college. So I got wow. into a four-year school for Catholic college, but we turned it down. So um, I went to um, college in Atlanta, you know, so did that. <laughs> and went to Clark, Atlanta. Jared's University. hometown. So Jared's hometown. I'm there. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so Atlanta's so a beautiful you're, city you're... when you catch it at the right time with the right people. <laughs> no, it was a different time back then. It was very, yes, very different absolutely. time. Mm-hmm very small southern town and that was really i can't say it was the first time but it was the second time that i had visited south i remember going to see my great grandmother in charleston south carolina um so i I really you know growing up in new york you grew up around everybody but it's a different feel um i'm a you know a city kid um my summers i spent time in the summers and actually the city if the state i should say of vermont so um I was an outdoors, believe it or not, person. Mm-hmm. I know how to build a cabin. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to canoe. <laughs> These and I can also skills. swim. These what? are important skills. And I even also know, also know how to swim. A lot of people don't know that. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. This is mm-hmm. exclusive information. Backpacking. You'd be surprised at stuff that I know, but I, I did all that as a child. And all my friends who really, really know me, they're still a part of my life. And um, I tell them, and they go, they're like, they don't know you, too. I'm like, no, they don't know me. Yeah. <laughs> well, when yeah. Cal- and there's pictures. There is pictures. <laughs> there are, I should say. When California goes underwater, you'll be set. <laughs> well, <laughs> not sure I won't be here, but okay. <laughs> uh, so were your parents uh, creative people? No, actually, my father's brother was he passed away um, in the mid um, 19, mid around 1995, I wanna say, um, was an actor. He's actually, actually was um, in the movie Child's Play, the movie, yeah. If you look at his face, you'll see, we basically have the same facial features. Um, he also was in a TV show called Private Benjamin, because he was the soldier in Private Benjamin. A lot of people don't know that too. With Goldie yeah. Hawn, Private Benjamin? Uh-huh. That is one of the funniest movies ever. Mm-hmm. So my father was the soldier that I guess I think the scene is where he was um, speaking to her. That's my uncle, I should say. Ah, yeah. ah, mm-hmm. Wow. Um, and um, my um, aunt in Champaign Urban, the whatever the, the university is called, um, Urbana, Champaign, Illinois, I can't think of the name of it, is a professional dancer, Caribbean dancer. So she teaches dance at the school. So that's where kind of the 
whole entertainment comes through, you know, my dad's side. Um, blood my, side. Right. My mom's side, it's all, we're all the educators. Like my mom has five masters. <laughs> Jeez. Yes. Yeah. So, that's so that's crazy. where the overachiever comes in. Yeah. My mom was always like learning and stuff like that. So most of the people on my mom's side, I would say were like nurses that I'm, as I'm flashing by them, but really creative side. I got that really from my dad's side and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. so were you yeah. a creative cr kid when you're growing up? Were you doing like creative things or, um, uh, no, I was probably more shy a little bit more. Um, yeah, I definitely was shy. Um, I was probably living in a fantasy world like I do now. <laughs> I um, a shy Everett. I just can't shy. See yeah, that. I was really shy, but I was when I wasn't at home. I was loud. So loud. <laughs> I was Trying to get attention. I was free. I was free. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I my fantasy was probably just because I watched a lot of television when I was a kid. I was engrossed with it. And quiet as it's kept, I scheduled all my classes around TV, <laughs> all my favorite shows. So I um, I was a soap opera, soap opera fanatic. Days of our fanatic. life, cruise of deception. Like, yeah, yeah. So watching that, that was my element of really um, tuning out from the world. And it relaxed me, uh -huh. you know, and stuff yeah. like that. So it was just, uh, just, you know, watch and go, wow, people actually literally you know, do that. But that's how I knew in college what I wanted to major in. I was sitting there just watching soap operas. Is like, that's what I want to major in. <laughs> so when you were looking at it, were you looking at it like you wanted to be an actor or were you looking at it, you just wanted to be a part of it or, or how were you looking at I it? I think I wanted to, um, a lot of people said I should have been, um, well, my family members will say I should have been a stand-up comedian. Because sure. <laughs> my dad, my dad would would kind of sort of when you get them in the mood, he start cracking jokes and stuff like that as well. But um, I think a lot of people thought I was going to be an actor in front of the camera. I can't remember lines. That's probably one of the main things. You know, That's if I can you're, remember you're lines, you're so good at sharp, improv. You don't need lines. I'm terrible with improv too. Yeah. No, but I've had not. actors tell me if I had a glass of wine, some lines would come to me. What you going like it all? <laughs> here you go. Have a zip. I'm drinking, I'm drinking milk. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a little later here. Sorry, it's coffee. <laughs> So yeah, so um, but yeah, I um, can't remember lines, but I've always knew that I was going to work in the TV industry. Nice, some something behind the scenes, and I also knew that I was going to move to California when I was five. And when did you end up moving to California? Twenty uh, when I was twenty-five. That's when I moved to California. Mm -hmm. So everything in my life that pretty much that I will say or think about it, it comes to fruition for me. I don't. So I, really, I didn't know you'd been it out there. I didn't know you'd been in uh, California since you were twenty-five. You didn't know what? I didn't know that you had been uh, in California. Oh yeah, I've been out here a very long time, two decades. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. I came out of here, um, nineteen ninety-four. Mm -hmm. So after graduating from college, and I actually literally came out here just to see it, um, just to kind of see what it was like. And the first thing I see is when you see those palm trees, I'm like. Oh, okay. Where did you, you know, go? Where was your you first know. place? What was the first place? I, you first, I lived North Where? Hollywood. Okay. Mm -hmm. I lived in North. I lived actually. I'm sorry. I lived in Van Nuys, so I lived up there. But I worked in the North Hollywood area and learned the valley, and then realized that this place is huge. It's really bigger than what it is. And then you just once I you know, once I got a car, then I was able to see you know, what's going on in Hollywood, what's going on, because each different city is all. Yeah. Totally, you guys got two airports. It's crazy. We have more. <laughs> <laughs> you have like two major airports that you can fly to. If you're going to more. North Hollywood, <laughs> you're going to South Hollywood. Hartsfield. Hart. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. You only guys, guys have one. Yeah. yeah. Really so sorry for, so really, sorry for your loss. Really small airport called Hartsfield. Yeah. yeah. So sorry for your loss. You need more. <laughs> insanity right. and so what was your first um what was your first kind of a uh, creative job in uh when after moving to california the first creative job i was on a show called the critic oh the that's a great 
Mm -hmm. about the, the movies. And I was a color, color stylist, they called us back then. So all of the scenes, the animation work that would come in, we had to color copy each of the different scenes because back then everything had to be painted, ink and painted per when they took the cells and they took the characters and they took all the props. The color, the color stylist would turn the cell over. They write a code, like a number, and then they would paint each character, each prop, everything in the scene. And then it was my responsibility once everything had dried off that I had to color copy everything because when we sent the actual artwork overseas, we had to keep copies of it because overseas they would lose it. So that was our way of keeping track. Oh, so I wow. did that. Mm -hmm. So how did you um, how did you have training? Or did you go to school or training for any of this or how did it just come about for you? No training. I made a phone call to my great aunt who knew somebody in New York, who knew somebody in Los Angeles. And uh, it literally just all fell into place. And the lady just said to me to just come in and um, interview with my one of my former bosses. And I walked in with a navy blue suit with a red tie with white shirt with black shoes and black socks. And I went over just like that, just walking in. Because in California, you don't interview with a suit. And they knew as soon as I walked in the door that I was from back east and I was about business as soon as they met me. They didn't want to tell it to me because they can look at the expression on their face. It's like, oh, he's going to do something. I, was like, I okay. don't stand for your bullshit. At 25. <laughs> That's awesome. So I went ahead, interviewed. Um, they specifically asked me um, how long I was going to be in town for. I was in town for, I was technically in town for seven days. No, I was technically supposed to be in town for seven days. I wound up staying 10 to 14 days, ran out of money, but I had a free airline ticket. Mm. I had a free airline ticket, but I was, I was, I was, you know, checking the whole place out. And right. then I um, was put on a plane. Let's just say it that way. I was put on a plane back to Atlanta. <laughs> and so when the plane landed August 31st at 8 a.m. Eastern time, I knew I would be back in Los Angeles. No, I'm sorry. I think it was July. It was probably July, July 30th, July 30th 30 or 31st. I knew that I was going to be back in Los Angeles by the end of um the end of August, because two weeks into me going back to Atlanta, I got a phone call. My cousin said, you got a phone call from California. I said, oh, so I called and they said, and this was back in 1995, 94. Um, when are you planning on coming back? And I said, oh, it's so funny because I'm just packing. I'm just literally packing. This is that, oh, we'll hold a job for you. Sweet. They literally hold a job for me. So I had to convince my parents back east because I ran out of money that, um, oh, I got a job. <laughs> <laughs> How you got a job and you just went there, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I got a job. And all my friends from college will tell you, everybody, everybody from my, from college all had a different story. So when they came to California, it took them weeks and months to find a job. I got a job offer in three days. You're Everett Oliver. Did they not understand really. I wasn't nobody, but I got a job offer in three days. It was hilarious. <laughs> they were all like, how does somebody like you just come and get a job offer in three days? I'm so sorry for your loss. I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm so sorry for your loss. I'm, just, I'm pretty smart. I just don't tell a whole lot of people, but I am. So I got to, you know, eventually, um, and so I accepted the job. I shipped everything out here. I go to Hartsfield. The lady says to me, uh, one of the old co-workers, she was, dropping, she was dropping me off at the airport. So the lady says to me, oh, you're going to Los Angeles? I said, yeah. She says to me, when you get to Houston, 
because I had a connected flight through Houston. It was United or Continental. When you get to Houston, tell them to forfeit your ticket, forfeit your seat. It's like, why? Because you can fly in first class, style in first class. <laughs> I was like, are you serious? I can go to LA in first class? <laughs> So I got to Houston. I bumped my ticket and they gave me a first class seat. Oh. <laughs> I flew the first class. <laughs> drunk. <laughs> That's drunk. why I'm flying alcohol anymore. I was drunk. <laughs> it was, I was so drunk. The altitude hurt my head that when the plane landed, I had about 75 CDs. I lost about 50 of them in the overhead bin because I couldn't reach them. I was like, you know what? I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> left them all on the plane. I couldn't grab them all. And I was holding up the line. <laughs> it's like drunk. Like, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> right. I could I couldn't grab them all. The case had opened up, the CDs that went down there. I was like, oh, I'm 25. <laughs> yeah, I'll get more CDs. Get some more CDs. <laughs> so that was my that was my story. So it all just fell. I always say it's destined. Everything just fell into place. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. <laughs> Jared is just like, what? I'm, like, like, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away with the stories. It's, it's such a good, I mean, it's so, I know you, but it's so fun to know about you and how you became you. It's, it's, it's enlightening. It's very, it's, it's, it's very cool. Well, I always knew that later on in life that I would, I would rise up. I didn't know um, how all of this was going to be as far as, and I'm still kind of sort of, I'm in my mid fifties. And so I've now done what my stepfather said to do. You can do anything you put your mind to. I've always kept that in my back of my head. So that saying is always with me. So I'm an overachiever. Um, I'm probably tough on myself. I'm but sure. I know, I know that I can, I can get there once I, I don't necessarily see the vision but I can go ahead and I can hear it. When I have time to really sit and be still, then I can go back and look and go, oh. It's like when I was you know, getting ready to open up my own business and I was putting stuff together, I hadn't realized how many shows I worked on. I had to go on my IMDB myself to look at all this stuff and was like, I did all this stuff. So what type of all stuff? my mentors. So you hmm? want to say you want to tell us some type of stuff you worked on? Well, I mean, I mean, you know, casting. I mean, so working on, I mean, like I said, I worked on I worked on The Simpsons. I worked on King of the Hill. I did Simpsons for a year. I did King of the Hill for three years. Um, I worked in casting for 15 years on, you know, shows, just shows back on Fox Kids. Um I worked on a show called Tripping and Tripping the Rift, that was on um, a sci-fi show. Um, I worked on a show called um, Starship Troopers, um, a show um, Max Steel, um, um, the big guy and Rusty the Ro Robot. These are shows that I've never really mentioned, but I'm going through my head. I worked on a show called Seaburn Jamal. Um, so. All of these shows and thinking about it, I probably worked on about 20 or something shows wow. credit wise from the production aspect of it, from the casting aspect of it. And really, I learned everything. As someone said, I soaked everything up like a sponge. And that was my way of I didn't know I was going into animation. I wrote a term paper in college about Bart Simpson. Let's be clear. Bart Simpson always talked back to his parents. I wrote a term paper and got a B plus about uh -huh. Bart Simpson talking about his parents, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and then I ended up on the show. <laughs> so That's crazy this, talk, mister. Right. So the thing about me looking at soaps was like, that's real life TV. That's, you know, hardcore 12, 16, 17 hours. But I will share... Um, my favorite all-time actor is Larry Hagman. Favorite all-time actor. Oh, yeah, yeah. Larry and the reason why, and I just really, and it's so funny, I had this conversation with my aunt, and I said, Larry Hagman, Hagman was brilliant. He was a brilliant actor, but he was a brilliant businessman. Not many people know how brilliant he was. And he literally, I've seen interview and clips of him literally 
going to the show and he knew it was going to be a hit. He literally knew that Dallas was going to be a hit. And when that scene, when he got shot, he, that's when he skyrocketed. Yep. He just went ahead and was like, um, he was like, oh, I'm going to um, ask for more money. Because literally everybody around the world knew. Watched knew JR get shot. And watched it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my business sense is I think like him. I literally think like him. And it, it's taken me, it's taken me time to really, like I, I'm at the point in my life where I'm, I still, I still stand true to who I am and my authentic truth, but I'm, I'm so happy working for myself that just like, you know, and sometimes I have to have, like my cousins will say to me, you realize you're an entrepreneur, right? And I go, oh yeah, because I don't be thinking about it. I'll be just thinking about who's the next person I have to assist, who's the next person I have to help. But Larry, in, in really watching him, he was like, he's like an idol, like, wow, he can do it, I can do that. You know, I'm just like, my world is a soap. <laughs> you know, you so know. True. I'm just, I'm not just the villain in it. I'm just like, oh, okay. I'm not, I know what I'm supposed to do. Okay, you know, that brings up a very good question that I like to ask. So, if your life was a, well, let's say soap opera, I say sitcom, soap opera, what would it be called? And who would be in your soap opera? <laughs> I don't know if anybody would be in my world. <laughs> <laughs> Larry Hagman. Um, you need to shoot him. <laughs> what would my soap opera be called? Mm-hmm. The Bold and the Everett. <laughs> <laughs> Days of my Everett. <laughs> I can't say young and restless. <laughs> the bold and the Everett. That's right. Oh man. Yeah, I've learned to, you know, do some things now, do some bold stuff that I probably would have never done because I was shy. I was very shy. Yeah. I was I, very, I, very shy, which is surprising to a lot of people. But my my friends who knew me as a kid. They always, they didn't know me as I was really shy. Now that I, was like, I, I, and for you, that was like a conscious decision to rectify that problem, right? Well, yeah. I mean, you just grow out of it, you Girl, know? You I just was like, I stay true to who I am. I still try to figure figure stuff out. I am still kind of shy to believe it, believe it or not. Everybody thinks I'm not. I, and, and, and I don't like really large crowds. I've never, <clears throat> mm -mm. I've never been to a concert. What? I like don't music like a music concert. I don't like large crowds. And I don't like music really up loud. Wow. Remember, as someone told me, I have little ears. So that damaged the ears. But I get really shy. Being on stage, oh my God. I can't even tell you. Everything is sweating. Everything. I'm oh, like, I, see, I figured you'd be very comfortable upstairs. No, I'm not very comfortable on stage because I'm I'm thinking so many different thoughts, <laughs> and they might not be nice thoughts. <laughs> right. You have to choose very wise wisely as to what you say. I, no, I'm you, not one of those fast thinkers. I will say that I probably need to take an improv class, and I'll be sitting up there going, <laughs> "Yeah." I might even actually do that. So if you get on stage with someone else, does that help? Or is it just the fact that you're getting on stage? It's just being on stage. Because everything, everybody, I, I, I always think, and this could be wrong, I don't try to be the center of attention. Everybody might think that, but I'm like, mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So it takes a minute to really, I have to be really, 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 really comfortable. But if I'm like with a whole entire body or whatever, I'm like, oh my God. And I, when I answer a question, it's like one or two sentences. I don't have an essay. <clears throat> my brain doesn't comprehend a whole long essay. When you're around so many different people, I'm like, oh yeah, I can add two, three, you know, four words. Hold like, on. And then I go home and go, damn, I should have said that. Damn, I should have said that. You live in and California I, and don't understand essays? What's right. Wrong with that, you, bro? How come you don't understand essays, man? You're so gonna get oh, in the wrong town, so bro. 
You're going to get bad comments about that. They're going to be in the chat writing bad comments. <laughs> <laughs> they have to watch the show first. I'm just kidding. <laughs> episode 25, remember. That's right. That's episode 25. For quite That's some cool. time. Christmas. Oh, yeah. All my Latino friends. So, um, you know, but that's just me, you know, in a nutshell. You know, it's just about really being comfortable. But it's like you you get these sideballs, you know, sideball questions. You're like, what? What? And and I'm a facial expression person, as you can tell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to. What do you say? I'm not understanding. Uh-huh. So let me ask you this. When you're working with someone, an individual or a client, like, I know you have rules and guidelines you, you go by, of course. Um, like what's your number one rule when working with someone? Like what, what is like something you don't lean on, break on, bend on? Like, that's the rule. Like, you want to work with me? This is it. Um, you have to have just, for me, it's like, I need to tap into you and see who you are, but you have to have acting. You really, really have to have acting and you really have to have improv. I mean, I meet people in, oh, I took an improv class when I was in college. (laughs) You're 43. Okay, well, that was like, right. You're a master. <laughs> Yay. I'm like, do you know how old I am? Oh, <laughs> oh, I've never taken an acting class. <laughs> oh. Maybe you should. Start with the basics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, but I mean, you know, I, and I'm looking for different things. I'm hearing different things, um, you know, in them, but I like to hone through them that's a gift and when i mean home through i like to, <laughs> I have to focus on one of my one of my colleagues because i can hear him in my head he calls me the uh, ghost whisperer <laughs> yeah one of my how, did you, how did you know that you um you wanted to direct people because i know that's very specific um i kind of fell into it now how did you know you and i really that? And really what's interesting was because I worked as a booth director, they kind of threw me when, so when I used to work at a talent agency, like all my shows were over. I called my mentor, Charlie Adler, and he said to me, it's a little funny story. He said, you need to be a booth director. I need to be a what? (laughs) You need to be a booth director. I said, I don't even know what that is. He said, you need to go work for a talent agency. I says, I'm in my mid forties. I'm not 25. Cause most agents are young and what's called, I would be considered old. He was like, that's what you need to do. Okay. So the next day, I don't know what I was doing online. There was a job posting somewhere for a booth director. <laughs> I kid you not. <clears throat> I didn't even know who the people were who I filled the form. I filled out everything. My car had broke down. My car was in the shop. I went, took a nap. I hit the button, send, took a nap. Apparently, the phone rang 30 minutes while I was napping. I didn't hear the phone ring. It was calling for an interview for me to show up at AVO Talent the next day. <laughs> and I was like this. Oh, Lord. I was in the shop. I live 40, 50 miles out of town, how am I going to get to this interview? And I don't really know too many people that's going to live, who live on my side of town. So it just so happens, I called a friend of mine, I was like, yo, I need you to do me a favor. I got a job interview. They're like, well, where's this job interview? In LA. What? <laughs> just go along with it. Why can't you just go along with it? They took me to the job interview and I kept saying in the car, I've got a feeling I'm going to get this job. I ain't going to have no car. I'm going to get this job. And sure enough, they hired me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I ain't got no car. How am I, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? Oh, when your car will be ready? I think it'll be ready on Monday, I think. Got somebody to drive me. <laughs> got somebody to drive me, drive me to work, pick me up, and went and got my car. And I ended up being a booth director. And so being a booth director... I learned how to be, I learned how to direct. I really, really, really learned how to direct because I was understanding how each and every actor works and tick. 
and helping them find jobs. I mean, I booked actors who had never been on an animated series before. I'm just looking at them. They were like, oh my God, I booked this job. Uh, I finally got an animated series. What do I do? Are you serious? No, they had no clue. Oh, I booked this guest role, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh. So I had to guide them and, and at least talk to them about it. But I was pulling performances out of them that they had never, you know, because most booth directors would probably be just hitting buttons. I was really, really involved in it. I, no, don't put them on there. Put put this person on there. Where's Steven? Why isn't Steven's name on there? Where's Jared? Put them on there. They, but we never sent them. To, I would tell the agents. <laughs> so the bigger bosses, they knew me, but the other agents or assistant agents, they were they were like younger than me. They were yeah, they were younger than me. So I just put them on there. And then I would do is I call an actor. Hey, hey, I'm sending you some copy. Tell them why are you whispering because they can hear me outside the door. Mm. <laughs> Don't say nothing. All right, I'll, I'll send the audition to you. So they would send me. So I'd get extra auditions that I would have to listen to, and I'd sneak them in. Nice. And that's the agents. Who put such and such? I did. That was a good call. <laughs> Ta -da. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, my agents, my former agents, I should say, really had trusted me because I kind of sort of like knew. I never obeyed the rules. I never even obeyed the rules when I worked on, on my shelf. I was one of those types. That's how I know I need to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> Because I never obeyed rules. I made up my own rules. It's like, oh, this works for me. Yep. But me, as far as me becoming a director, that's what happened. I literally would be like, okay, I got into their heads. I got into their minds. And then it would just pull it and pull it. And then he took somebody. And literally one of my former um, actors told me, he said, you need to do this by yourself. Because you're really good at it. I'm like, huh? Then Barbie, Chris Anthony, you're really good at this. What? Chris, you're making it up. No, you really are good at this. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you developed you your style. It. You developed mm -hmm. your style working for those people. I developed my own style. Mm -hmm. And you're ready. And I'm all, and here's the other thing too. I listen. I think that's one thing that people just don't do in this world. I'm a great listener. Cause I believe that you can get lessons from other people. Absolutely. You might not know. And so people told me and said to me, oh, you need to just, just a little hint of, you know, you could do this by yourself. I'm like, what? No, you could do this by yourself. You'll figure it out. Like I tell actors all the time. I tell people all the time, you'll figure it out. And then that's when the bug literally hit me. Oh, I can travel? And I, and I remember sitting in my house saying to myself, actors don't have any money. I could travel to them. I love traveling. And I don't have to sit, I don't have to be in LA for a couple, for a couple like, like a month. Oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> this is going to be great. I can go visit my family members and I can still work from home and be, you know, hey, do me a favor. Watch my place while I'm gone. Do you need somebody? To no, I don't need nobody being there. I just need you to know, make sure that my stuff is still there when I get there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's when the bug came with me to just, oh, let me go tour around. And it paid off. Nice. Literally, I literally thought about that the other day when I had time to sit and reflect because everybody got to know my personality while I was touring around the country by myself. And I was just kind of like, oh, okay. And I was just doing it just to have fun. It was like, when thinking about like the entrepreneur stuff, I was just doing it, you know? Cause I knew everybody wanted to get an animation and I knew everybody wanted to come to LA and I had all the information for them. I had, and, and I was, and I've been directing. So I was able to be like, mm, you ain't, you want, oh, okay. You think you're going to make it in LA? Okay. Okay. They were like, well, what does that mean? Mm, you need work. You're not LA. <laughs> and I remember telling some people, I've heard, I hurt some people's feelings and told them, you're not LA. 
I Let's literally see. distinctly told, I remember telling an actor, he's, you're not LA. And people, and I'm not thinking of somebody else and they, when they see these, they're gonna start laughing, they're gonna think it's them. And now I'm thinking about them right now. I told them, I said, you're not LA. They're like, and I said, the reason why, and I, it's not my role as a person to say, to give them thank you, give them all the answers. It's my role to tell them, you're not this. When you get it, your light bulb moment will go. I'm just supposed to tell you, this is the reason why. You'll figure it all out. <clears throat> you're not LA. Go to LA and figure it out yourself. You'll understand it. Once you go ahead and understand the dynamics, this is a different place. This is a different beast. Everything that everybody was saying about LA is true. I don't hold no punches. I come from New York. I come, I'm a go-getter. I'm a, I'm a, I break down walls. This has nothing to do with me being a male or me of my color. That's just who I am. And I know who's being real and who's not. Oh, okay. I do a lot of smiling. Okay. That's that's the one thing, honestly, when I met you, I was really shocked to find out how human you were, to be like, to be honest with you, because I knew I knew of your body of work because it's been heavily influenced in my life. The shows you've been on, oh damn, and, you know, and it's just all the, the voices and just so much, so many things. And then the night that I met you, like I was like, Oh, I don't want to bother you. And you were like, Shut up, stupid, come here, let's talk. You know, just like you were open, he was a human being, and that's like it was funny because I believe that you really were my first introduction to someone of stature or upper, you know, what I thought was upper echelon of voiceovers. Mm -hmm. And this, and it was like, holy shit, he's literally just a human being. Mm -hmm. and, every, and I'll be honest with everybody who's watching this TV show, may, whatever happened, if I'm lying, I have been in contact with this man ever since. And it's been a genuine thing and steven can get for, for him too it's just beautiful to know how much of a human being some people are and that you were behind all of because, that because you, you, you have to head. be taught right i'm not i don't let it get to i mean people will say it that you know my head is swollen i mean but i i take stuff i have to take it and i have to go and i have to as as my spiritual guides or whatever or stuff I watch on TV, you need to take it and you got to sit and be quiet because someone told you something for a reason and my mind is racing about whatever, anything else or what's going on. And so I'm like, oh, okay. I was told to be, I was told to do what I'm doing now. I had some, my, um, my uncle just passed away from COVID. But Sorry. my aunt and uncle, thank you. My aunt and uncle were entrepreneurs themselves. I'm the only real entrepreneur in my immediate family. And my parents now are like, we don't have anybody in their immediate family as an entrepreneur but you. So they're just looking at it like, wow. I said, I just got started. Just, just sit back. Buckle up. There's a hell of a lot more coming. Started, yeah. So it's I've taken it. So I had to really sit and go. I just literally had a, conversa a conversation probably two nights ago when a, a, a colleague just called me and said, you took that, I took that booth director from scratch and build what I built and I've only done it in four, four or five years. And I haven't really, sent, really sat down and processed everything. I'm just like, oh, okay, imagine what I've done in four years going on year five. Because people go, what are you going to do in your next five? Well, I'm like, I don't know. I ain't got there yet. I'm working on it. I'm worried about what's going on today. I'm worried about what can I do of service to my clients and my actors. My friends who knew me when I was a child, they're all like, oh my God, you 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 did this one when you were like like in camp, when you were like nine, ten years old. I'm like, yeah, I had a big mouth. I was, I was, but they said the arts was you. I said, yeah. But my counselor, my camp counselor, she lives out in LA, which is hilarious because I had just I ran, ran into it. She knew one of my actors. And she was like, you mean Everett? <laughs> and I was like, she was like, Everett, I know that name. They didn't call me Everett. They called me by my nickname. My nickname is Ev. My family members call me Ev. Yes. So when the camp counselor found out, she was like, oh my God. I said, she said, you're literally the same. 
I was like, but I was loud. I was loud though. She was like, yeah, he was loud. But you was, I said, but I was smart. Was I smart? She was like, yeah, you were smart. I was like, oh, you're smart. <laughs> <laughs> and to me, you know, my main thing is, was I smart? Yeah, you were smart. <laughs> so, but she said, yeah, I knew you were, you know, you're destined to do greater heights. But it's, you gotta be focused. You gotta be persistent. People have said now. Just keep that I'm gonna keep going. I'm I got to. I got one more question and I'll hand it over to Steven because we will definitely want you to leave a bunch of info and everything else with us. But what do you think is one of the biggest falsehoods that is kept from people that are starting in VO, like like in the industry, not a secret, but something that's not blunt and honest about the industry that people are like, oh, this is going to be fun and we're going to make so much money. And they, they just come in and they're blinded. What is the one ultimate truth that you could, that you think save could save them an immense amount of time? They don't really know. They got on, they would, this way too. This just so happened last night. They get online and they Google. They, and they got involved in different organizations, but I don't necessarily know if they've researched. Thank you. I don't think they've done their research. <clears throat> I re it's not even about their grandmothers holding they had a great voice. I don't really think they really honestly done their research. Self-education is super important in this industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And don't click on the first damn thing. Those people are paying to be at that top spot. Mm -hmm. Do your mm -hmm. research. Dig deeper. Mm -hmm. I, look, I'm, for people, I look for people because I, because I, I spoke to somebody last night and I literally was like this. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I can hear my spiritual angel say, oh boy, he got a whole lot to know. I said, look, I give you four. I give you a Christmas tip. I wind up giving him six Christmas tips. Oh, Lord. He was like, I just. He said, he just, I said, oh, and, and he said, oh, I'm going to go do this and blah, blah, blah. I said, oh, okay, okay, you'll be back. I'm not worried. I don't, I don't worry about when people come see me and then they leave because I usually go ahead and send them out to the world. I send them, go see this person, go see that person because I don't have no ego. I definitely don't have no ego and I don't care. And I'm blunt about it. I like that about you, honestly. But my thing is, is that, you know, they need to take the necessary time to really find somebody who they have a core with. Cause you, I will say this, we all don't, we all don't have that special core with each other. Some, we're not this that fit, thank you, it's a, it's a fit. And everybody's like, who are you talking to? Yeah, they talk to me as I speak. It's, you have to have that relationship with somebody. It's like you have it in your own families. Some of the people you gonna jive with, and some of the people, some as 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 the relatives will say, you just love them and bless them and leave them alone. They're gonna be just fine. I go okay. Mm -hmm. Bless your heart. It's the same. It's the exact same thing. What we do. There's people who you work with that you just don't get along with. Sometimes and, you just want to choke a motherfucker. I know. But, <laughs> well, I mean, the thing is, you're gonna have to learn to get along because they're coming into your life for a reason. Right. Either you got to teach them a lesson or they're going to teach you a lesson. Absolutely. Either you can both learn you know, or one of y'all can learn. Right. Mm -hmm. But you have to be willing to, everybody, we're all different. And you get a little bit from everybody. This is why I say when I tell people to go to different coaches. I sent a coach, I sent a, I sent a student to a coach and it's the same thing with the sexes. I said, you need a dominant female that's going to kick your behind because this male was a dominant male. So you need a dominant female. A passive female, she's not going to do nothing for you because you're just going to walk circles around it and go, okay, okay. You need somebody that's going to be just like you. And I sent her, I even called the coach and said, oh, I'm sending you, I'm sending this person to you because I could just tell your personalities will definitely boom, 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 and you can get them going in the right direction. But I do that for people. That's just a natural thing I do. That's awesome. For people. That's I don't really match. think about make me a match. Find me a phone. <laughs> <Match me laughs> <a kid. laughs> but yeah, so that's a natural, it's a it's a gift that I, I, I do. I don't I don't sit and worry about grabbing all actors because I go, mm, you'll be back. You'll be back. You'll see me somewhere and have a conversation and say, Oh, oh, and I've done that. 
you know, I've done that to actors and they'll say, oh, thank you so much for introducing me to such and such. It's like, yeah, what would you come to me for? You just wanted me to validate and tell you, nah, mm -mm. that one is, that one to get you in the right direction. This one, mm -hmm. self esteem. You give it to mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I build that. Mm -hmm. I build people's stuff. So I, that's what I, that's what I, I'm, I'm strongly do besides mentor and, and coach and stuff like that. I get into you and understand how you tick, and that's and that's how I can direct you. Well, that's probably what that. separates you a hell of a lot further than a lot of the mm -hmm. other so-called want to be in the same, you know, tier as you. There's other coaches mm -hmm. and there's other directors, but mm -hmm. there's a tier mm -hmm. to things. And mm -hmm. your personal, uh, there's, there's, there's like vetted. You're, you're more than vetted. You're, you, mm -hmm. you do it a different way. And if you didn't do it a different way, you wouldn't be so successful doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's like having the best flavor and everybody wanting to come have that ice cream. Mm -hmm. Not everybody, you're not everybody's not going to understand. You got 31 flavors and you're only selling five right now. Right. Not everybody. I had, I had a, I will say this, I'm probably going to say it wrong. I had a colleague that said, not, not everybody's going to be able to come and come into your circle. I said, Ooh. I said, Okay. I took that. Now, if they see this, they're going to know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, but see, what happened is I locked it in my brain because when they said it to me, I had to take a moment because sometimes, you know, when you get hit on that head, it is like, that's something of, of valuable information that you're going to be able to use, you know, to someone else and pass that on. Yeah, that's so true. Mm hmm I, I don't have anything else. Did, I mean, Jesus, I, I, I've had this, such a good time. Stephen, do you have any other questions for he's in, he's, Oliver? He's in shock. I can tell you that. He's learned now a notch more. I've learned I, so much more about it so than I ever knew. It was like a totem pole and there was one and now there's like four on top of it. It We're was building. like layers, layers of layers. Money. We're building layers, and, Everett. And more and more stuff just came out. <laughs> You're gonna use that character for something one day, Jared. I can believe you. <laughs> oh no, that's my Uncle that Teddy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> use Uncle Teddy for something. Right. I'm just gonna take a, picture, people. take a picture of him and put it put it in your booth. <laughs> <laughs> well, where can everyone find the lovely and talented Everett Oliver? Voiceactingdirector.com, all one word. Voiceactingdirector.com. Oh, they can email me. And mention your name in the show at eo at voiceactingdirector.com. Mention your name. And will they get something special if they mention? Mm, maybe it depends on how I feel. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and put the word episode 25 in the subject matter. <laughs> <laughs> Coupon code episode 25. Welcome to episode 25, everyone. This is great. I, I'm purposely going to do it so I know when y'all edit it. Oh. And he, did he mention it in the front of the show and in the back of the show? And, we gotta edit it. <laughs> and if it is in episode 25, there'll be hell to pay. Oh. Every episode 25. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, trust me, there's going to be episode 25. I'm telling oh, you that right know, now. You know I'm there 25. is. Mm -hmm. Man, I can't. So, yeah, just be, re be true to who you are. Don't ever let nobody stop you. Stay focused. Everybody's got a dream. Everybody's got a dream. I remember my mother told me, everybody's got a dream. You don't knock people's dreams down. But if they don't have dream A, you gotta have a backup plan. Remember, I didn't end up in soap operas. That's why I was supposed, that's why I thought I was supposed to be. I've been hanging out with Susan Lucci. That's true. Susan Lucci is not thinking about Everett, okay? Larry Hagman is not thinking about Everett. God bless us dead. That's dead, okay? So I took the second best thing. I ended up in animation. And That's I true. still, my mother works of service because she's always doing sponsors and collecting money for the hospital. After all these years, I finally figured out what the hell she does. And my father worked for the New York police officer. He was a New York police officer for 40-something years. So I'm really traveling in my parents' footstuff of service. My uncle does stuff of service because he works in human resources for, I think, the government. I ain't going to say that. I'm going to leave that alone. Be quiet about that. <laughs> I ain't going to say that. 
My right, brother right, works right. into the court systems. So I come from a service. My grandmother, who's born, who's born, um, Stephen and my grandmother born the same day. Oh, wow. And she was a nurse. That's how. Mm -hmm. That's the one who took me to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And she's around me 24-7. Oh, wow. Hit me upside my head. Boy, if I got to come down there, I'm like, don't, 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 don't come down here. Don't come down here because you already know you will hit boop right upside your head. But yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, yes, ma'am. Right. Settle down, you settle. But yeah, so you know, you choose the next best thing that's for you. Yeah. You know, and stuff like that. You just have to know it's a gut thing. You gotta go with it. You gotta go with your gut. That's true. But you gotta know you understand your dynamics too. Because you're not going to always get, I'm, you know, I'm one to just be like, okay, keep moving. If I can't get that, might as well do it this way. You know, I've Don't ended up in stagnant. Hmm? Don't become stagnant. Mm -hmm. Don't that depression. Oh, I, God. That's not even in my, that's not even in my head. I don't even know what it's like to be, to be depressed. I, I don't even think like that. My mindset is just like, oh, okay. Failure is not even a word for me. Because. It's not even a failure, it's an experience. It didn't work out, it was just an experience. So you gotta look at that, shift that, shift that negative into a positive. Why did I have to go through that? Because you realize if your life goes into that same brick wall or that same pattern, something is wrong. Why I keep hitting that same wall? I don't understand. Oh, because you haven't gotten it yet. You didn't that's learn. Why you, that's why you have to keep doing the same shit. You haven't learned yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And being around the same people that's not healthy for you. OQP. Only quality people. Mm -hmm. Surround yourself with some people who are going to uplift and it's going to take you to the next level. You'll get there. People will see it through you. I Realizing and me thinking about it and going to work every day and like dealing with animation artists and dealing with producers. I was like, mm, what's this about? Huh. I'm looking at, I'm just looking crazy. This is my crazy look. <laughs> mm -hmm. They ain't smart. That I've one over there is not smart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which, what's this about? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just gonna wait two years until you pull that layer. And all those layers are gonna, and I'm still gonna look at you just like this. Mm -hmm. you, you played that same foolishness two, three years ago. You're still playing that same foolishness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'm I'm soaking up everything because I'm looking like, mm. then that's right. smart. If anybody out there needs coaching, guidance, look no further. Prayer. <laughs> Want to go bowling? That's right. You'll be your bowling partner, whatever. <laughs> Just wear a mask and, you know, keep wear a mask. Thing, you're responsible. Bowling alleys are closed. Just for $30 a day, you too can sponsor your own Everett Oliver adventure. <laughs> or, auditions. You want to get beat up on an audition? Yeah, you need to you need nail. Love, you right? need to nail an audition? I love that sometimes. I love just be like, oh, okay, let's, let's just let's have some fun. Let's no, but seriously, fun. if you need to nail an audition, yeah, call Everett. Yep. Mm -hmm. He's got you. And make sure y'all study the script. <laughs> right? Some people don't even study the script. Now, they do you recommend when, out of them. Do you recommend when people look at scripts that they read the scripts in their head or they read them out loud? I just want them to just read and be familiarized with the scripts. So at least they know what's happening. So I'm listening for your acting and whether or not, oh, you slipped out of character. Who, who, Please don't do it, Becky. Sound. That Where's John? John went somewhere else. I need John <laughs> to come back because I don't know who that is. Where's John? John. Yeah. Well, oh, oh, oh. Well, th don't stop. But I need you to find John because I don't know what happened to him. Get it, get it. Don't stop it. Get it, get it. <laughs> All right, give us that website one more time, there, Mr. Everett, please. One more time. Let's drop it on him. Drop it on him. Drop it on him. Voiceactingdirector.com. <laughs> wow voiceactingdirector.com. You know, you move pretty you move pretty good because I can't do my neck like that. Anymore. I got freckles. I'm speckled with rhythm. It's beautiful. I'm Irish. They were like, bless him with something because he's so white, so Don't white. You know, I'm Irish and German. 
Uh, Irish, I know of. Uh, everything else, who knows? You need to go. You need to go. I was go. born in Germany, though, and Armin is my is. good friend. Armin is definitely. Oh, Armin is your good friend. Armin is my good friend. We have. Uh, now I feel like I, I feel like I want to call Armin right now. We uh, were always looking at the beer garden. We talked about it. No, and... About the beer garden, yes. The beer garden. We learned some things on the interviews. <laughs> it was very good, yeah. Oh well, at least at least Armin was mentioned in mine. Bridget. Bridget. <laughs> Cameo. We gotta get Bridget. you back. <laughs> she, That's awesome. She, she'd be she'd be like this. She said. Oh my god, he waited like all to the end. I had to watch the whole thing. I'm like, Bridget, chill out. <laughs> episode two. I mean. Episode two, right? That's funny as hell. It's episode two. I'm 25, Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> and I oh, was ready to go. <laughs> well down the road. I was ready to go, Bridget. Yeah, I, well, that was my I, fault. I didn't like, tell it was on camera. So that's dumb. I, I, I'm actually with Bridget's um gra grandmother. And it was so funny. It was so funny. I looked at... I think it was her grandmother. I saw the picture. I saw a picture. She, her and her son looked just alike. You mm -hmm. look at their faces. Mm -hmm. But when I looked, I think it was her grandmother. I'm like, wow. They look, you can look it in the eyes. Yeah, and see. It was either her or her mother, but I think it was her grandmother. I thought it was her grandmother. I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm done with Jared. Well, I'm done with Jared too. And you know what? That brings up a good point. We're done with this episode of VO and Stereo. As always, I'm your host, Jared Brushers. Along with me always, Stephen Coghill. And today, Everett, thank you so much for being here. It really was. It was a blast. Thank you. Thanks, thank everybody. Till next time. Ah! We'll see you later. See you next time.